Hi everyone, today I want to talk about a book that means a lot to me and that is The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa, translated by Stephen Snyder. This review will contain spoilers because there are some important moments I really want to talk about and I also want to analyze the characters, so if you haven't yet read the book, I recommend you do that first so you won't get spoiled. The Housekeeper and the Professor is about a single mother of a 10-year-old boy who is hired as a housekeeper to clean and cook for the professor. He suffered a head injury in the 70s, and since then he only has an 80-minute memory. The story is told from her point of view, and from the summary you'd think this book is sad, but it's actually a very sweet and heartwarming story about relationships and connections and how they can develop between the most unlikely people and in the most unusual of circumstances. But beyond that, it's also a love letter addressed to Matt. There is a lot of talk about numbers and equations, and the way the professor describes them has something magical about it. Matt becomes a language in and of itself, it's his way of communicating with others, of expressing his emotions and thoughts. It's almost like the numbers are characters themselves, that's how real he makes them look. His love for them is pure, he doesn't care about prizes or recognition. The only thing that matters is the joy of working on a problem. There is this beautiful moment in the book, after the housekeeper is fired by his sister-in-law. Her son tries to visit the professor despite not being allowed to do so anymore, and so she's called back to the house to get him, and while all four of them are sitting at the table and the housekeeper tries to explain the situation, the professor takes a piece of paper from his pocket and writes this down. This right here is called Euler's identity, and is considered by many to be the most beautiful equation. This E here is a mathematical constant called Euler's number, and pi is pi, the circumference divided by the diameter of a circle. They're both irrational numbers, meaning they cannot be written as the ratio of two integers. They're also transcendental, meaning they're not algebraic. i is an imaginary number equal to the square root of minus 1. And then we have 1 and 0, and the main point here is that these are such different types of numbers that they should have nothing to do with each other, there should be no connection between them. And yet there is. Just like there are four people in that room who are so different that there should be no connection between them, and yet there is. This equation is the professor's way of saying that there is an unbreakable bond between the people at that table, that the housekeeper and Ruth, her son, are an important part of his life now. And he's saying this despite the fact that he no longer remembers them anymore. This is the type of man the professor is, someone who genuinely cares about those around him, Someone who doesn't want to inconvenience others to the point where he attaches scraps of notepaper to himself so he wouldn't have to ask them constantly about things he can't remember. It's easy to love this character, especially when you see him interact with the housekeeper and especially with Wood. He has a very strong love for children, and the connection that develops between him and Wood is really meaningful and beautiful. He becomes something of a father figure to the boy. And despite his short memory span, his behavior towards Ruth never changes. They bond over their shared love of baseball, and he always greets the child with enthusiasm and treats him with care. He's always worried about him and does his best to keep him safe, even when he himself is panicked and out of his depths. Like that scene where Ruth cuts his hand and he runs, carrying the boy all the way to the doctor. The connection between him and the housekeeper is also worth talking about. She is a very resilient, hard-working character, strong and determined, but also kind and understanding, and from the very beginning she is drawn by the way the professor talks about numbers. She realizes that this is his way of reaching out to her, and she appreciates that, and with time she begins to like math and the way the professor describes it. This is one of the things I like most about his character. He explains things with so much enthusiasm, but he isn't proud or condescending despite his knowledge. He is happy to see people listen attentively and come up with ideas of their own, patiently waiting for their answer. In his world, there are no bad questions or wrong answers. The professor never really seemed to care whether we figured out the right answer to a problem. He preferred our wild, desperate guesses to silence, and he was even more delighted when these guesses led to new problems that took us beyond the original one. He had a special feeling for what he called the correct miscalculation, for he believed that mistakes were often as revealing as the right answers. When the housekeeper and her son solve a problem, he applauds them and praises them sincerely. He doesn't chastise anyone and has no expectation that people should learn things as fast as possible. He thinks problems have their own rhythm. A problem has a rhythm of its own, just like a piece of music. Once you get the rhythm, you get the sense of the problem as a whole and you can see where the traps might be waiting. 
He reminded me of something I tend to forget sometimes. It's okay to not know things. There's this feeling sometimes that we need to understand everything, that we can't let others see that we aren't up to date with certain things. This fear of showing you don't understand things others do. This fear of asking questions. And this is why I love this book. Because it reminded me that it's completely normal to not be up to date with everything. That it's okay to take my time and think about something thoroughly. That it's okay to admit that there are things I don't understand. That there is no shame in asking questions and giving wrong answers when you learn something.